good afternoon, good morning from wherever you're watching this. One of the most requested questions I received, whether through my website or through Instagram, um, is the question about my diet journey and why I've shifted quite a bit. Um, and I've been pretty unapologetic about it as, as research continues to grow and as I continue to learn, I tweak and change. Nutritional science is probably the most evolving science in clinical literature right now. And so I figured, let me just go ahead and address this before I start making more YouTube videos on here. This is like my first video in a while. I haven't really made much videos on here. Thank you for those who subscribed. Um, a little bit about me, if you don't know who I am. My name is Dr. Faye Kazi. I'm a registered dietitian. I have a background in nutrition and dietetics, and I also have a PhD in rehabilitation science. My clinical research for my dissertation was on the effects of probiotic blend um, on bariatric sleeve gastrectomy. So it's bariatric surgery. And I do have two published articles in peer-reviewed clinical journals, which is really exciting. And so anyways, my desire in sending out this video to my subscriber list on my uh, website specifically, the reason why I wanted to send this to you guys was because I received a lot of questions about it and, um, and I just want to address it. First off, I've tried several different types of diet therapies for myself. I was vegetarian, I was vegan, um, I, I went into keto just to explore it to see what it would be like. Um, I've done a lot of intermittent fasting, different variations of intermittent fasting. So I've explored quite a bit and I can, and obviously I have the nutritional background and the science to, to look into it a little bit more deeper. Here's what my dietary journey has shown me. It's shown me that even if I get the actual content, like the actual substances, the actual foods correct, I might be missing, I might still be missing a lot more information and I'm open and willing to learn as I go along. So it might not just be about what you eat. Um, research is now shifting into when you eat, like what time of the day you're eating might be just as important as what you're eating in the day. Okay. And I know that can be a little bit triggering and provocative for some people to think about, uh, but this is what the research is showing us. We don't know as much as we flatter ourselves that we know. And I, you know, I think that we need to all approach science and nutrition and just the way our bodies function and and just the complexity of the human body, I think this just allows for us to approach it with a teachable spirit, a humble heart, and a grateful heart because we are indeed magnificent creatures that the Lord has created and has given each of us a human body. This human body is no joke. I'm interested in that journey and I'm interested in sharing it with you. Now, I do know that there are lots of opposing beliefs against some of the decisions I've taken um, and I don't know where how to respond to it other than my interest is to grow and learn. If your interest is to grow and learn, then please join me on this journey. But I do not take offense to people who disagree with me. They are on their own journey, but I am interested in sharing what I believe to be effective nutritional science. How do I say this? For a while I hid under a rock um, because I just didn't want to deal with any controversial uh, pushback or anybody saying, oh, I don't agree with you. I just didn't want to deal with it. Like let every person learn from their own ways. But then I can't, I can't sleep well at night feeling that I know so much information and I'm not sharing it because I just don't want to disappoint people. You might resonate with this understanding that dietary um, orientation, for lack of a better word, is almost like a religion for a lot of people. And they can get offended and triggered very easily when they hear of or begin discussing with individuals who have ideas that are different from their own. And so I think that's the thing that needs to be, like we need to be elevated out of that space. We're all on this journey together. We all want healthier, stronger bodies. We're all interested in becoming, I guess, the best version of ourselves my responsibility to you is to be able to share what I've come across in the research. Even though what I personally go through in my own dietary experience is technically anecdotal evidence, uh, I can't just come and say, oh, well, this worked for me. But I can tell you that it has helped me navigate the oceans of clinical data in a way, it's like a compass to kind of give me direction as to what I believe can work and what won't work. Um, there are so much information, so many great books and resources from especially gastroenterologists. I will say 
If you're going to look at clinical research, um, try to make sure that whoever wrote the paper has a, is a gastroenterologist. The reason why I say that is because they have specialized knowledge in the area of the gut. That's where you harness all of the energy and the resources that your body will utilize to function properly. If your gut is not in good condition, no matter how excellent of a diet you're consuming, it simply will not have an effective influence on your body. Here are a few tips, I guess. Try to find clinical research from re reputable gastroenterologists um, and also pay attention to see if there's a dietitian on that paper. And the reason is because no matter how, gastroenterologists seem to have a deeper nutritional understanding in comparison with other MDs. Um, and I, I wanna approach this delicately because my husband is a doctor, um, but they just simply have not been equipped with enough nutritional guidance. Uh, most physicians who have a specialized in, in like family medicine or uh, sports medicine or, or more of a dietary medical training, they probably would have had one course of nutrition through their entire like medical training program. And a lot of doctors admit, admit to this. So just because someone has an MD doesn't mean that you should trust what they're saying. Personally, I have found that resources and books and papers written with gastroenterologists, contributors, seem to be much more scientifically sound. So what kind of dietary approach am I personally utilizing right now? After almost a decade and a half of education and then personal education that came after my academic education, where am I on the dietary spectrum? I don't like labeling very much, but in order to help you guys understand where I'm coming from, I would describe myself as a whole food plant-based pescatarian with an emphasis on high quality fiber. I know that's a mouthful, but that's really where I feel that I'm at right now. And so I'm not vegan, absolutely not. I don't encourage veganism. I don't judge those who are vegan, but I was a vegan for years. I also forgot to mention that I'm actually an author of a best-selling vegan cookbook. I'll post it in the bottom bar below so you can know how serious I was about this. And when I say vegan, probably wasn't, I wasn't technically vegan for the ethical reasons. It was more for like the health purposes that I believed at the time. Um, and then we can go into that uh, at another time. I was vegetarian for quite some time. And like I said, I tried the keto diet for quite some time. So I feel like I'm going more into like an intuitive, mindful eating practice. And now the research is showing with intermittent fasting and just fasting in general, how what you consume is more of like an art than it is like a staple food pyramid, which is completely outdated and honestly is ridiculous. I would never ever refer to a food pyramid or even just a basic food guide. It really is missing a huge amount of information. It's missing the heart of what makes a person healthy. And it really boils down, if I can distill it down to one thing, it's going to be the type and the amount of different fibers you can put in your diet. Fiber, like actual fiber from plant sources. But then you're like, well, I thought you're not plant-based and da 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 da. No, 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 no. 90% of my diet and the diet of my family is plant-based. Um, it's within that 10% that there is uh, opportunity and room to explore, um, to gain specific nutrients that I probably can't gain from plants exclusively. But it's the art of incorporating whole food plant-based ingredients that, is, that have the medicinal qualities to it. But then there's this huge elephant in the room, which is nourishment. And nourishment cannot just come from plant sources at this time in the Earth's history. Maybe at one point it could have, but the more I look at the evidence-based research, the more I look at um, other incredible resources, the more I'm convicted that high quality ingredients that are not necessarily plant ingredients are necessary, important, and beneficial. All right, so this was more of just like an introduction to future videos. I know it was a little bit all over the place. Um, I didn't want it to be scripted. I didn't want it to be hyper detailed. I just wanted to give you like a really broad overview, like zoom out and say, okay, this is where I'm at. I would like to look at intermittent fasting, chrononutrition. I'd like to look at, you know, veganism and my, my issues with veganism, um, vegetarianism, pescatarianism, the pros and cons to all of it. So if you're interested in following along, please go ahead and subscribe um, to this YouTube channel. Feel free to send your questions, post them below. I really want to take the misinformation that is out there. 
especially around diet therapy. Everyone and anyone thinks that they are qualified to give nutritional information. I have been in this academically knee deep. And then after my education, I'm still learning. And I sometimes don't feel qualified to be super confident about my opinions because not all bodies are created equal. Not everyone's going to respond to a specific type of diet the same way. And then there are these individuals who have absolutely no background no qualifications, who have such a profound um, sense of urgency to share their insistence about certain dietary practices. And that just, that just bothers me. I'm just gonna be flat out honest. Research is constantly evolving, especially nutritional science. And mind you, research is tricky. And just because a research paper says one thing, you really need to go and look at the population that was selected, the age group that was selected, um, their dietary practices, there needs to be heavy, heavy like food record systems behind each patient, uh, their, their, their labs, like everything needs to be comparable. You need to control for these things. Everybody's different. Everyone has a different genetic makeup. And the way clinical research is right now, it's like drinking from a water hydrant. It can be overwhelming. I feel like my goal for this channel and for this platform is to help distill the enormous volume of data and information that's being produced and to handpick what is probably gonna be the most effective, the most practical, because what is the point of sharing clinical research that you yourself can't go practice at home? Just because a fecal transplant is FDA approved does not mean that everyone's gonna go out and do it. So you have to approach clinical science with a very open mind and a recognition and an understanding that you're not going to have all the answers. If you made it this far, thank you. And here's three criteria. And this is what I use to approach different types of nutritional recommendations or science or research that, that I come across to help me decide whether or not I wanna take this home and really unpack it or just set it to the side. I'm like, mm, that's just not for me right now. It's called BAR and it's an acronym for beneficial, applicable, and relevant. If this new philosophy or piece of clinical research or whatever it is, isn't beneficial and it's not applicable and it's not relevant to me, that's a pretty clear sign for me to just remove it out of the research list that I'm looking at and move on to the next thing. Maybe like 70% or 80% of the research that's out there falls into the not applicable, not relevant and not beneficial. Okay guys, thank you so much for making it this far. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. And again, please post any questions or comments in the bottom bar below. My plan is to post probably uh, a video a week and I'm being very ambitious with that, but let's hope we can pull that off. Take care and have a great rest of your week.